Um, welcome again, everyone, to our sequester, a series of Sequester Camp webinars. Um, this one has been one of the most successful ones that we've had uh, with Bill and Mitch, and uh, it's probably the most inquired about, I will say, as well, which is why uh, all of you folks listening have been um, calling and emailing, asking, where can I find all the past videos that you guys have done? And we have them posted several places. Our videos um, for all of Bill and Mitch's past videos are posted on our website um, on the Sequester Camp page. And I just posted the link to that in our um, chat. And they're also, since we live stream this on Facebook, the videos are also on Facebook and they're also on our YouTube channel. So if you wanna go back, if you have a, a therapist that you're working with um, that you would love um, for them to see what Bill and Mitch have been able to accomplish, um, feel free to show them those, those past videos, have them tune in on Mondays um, to this live session or, or whatever. But anyway, welcome everyone. Um, we're so lucky to have Bill and Mitch with us once again today, and I'll let you guys take it from here. For anybody that does not know me, I am Mitch. Uh, I am at Ramp Fitness right now. You can see uh, the gym behind me. This is my gym in Portland, Oregon. Uh, to add something on top of there as well, uh, the videos are also on my Instagram. I have posted it. Uh, that's kind of how we're accessing it. So I can show you guys through this webinar, uh, but I'm keeping them up too. So that's Mitch Wade, M-I-T-C-H-W-A-D-E, P-D-X. And then that's, that's kind of the tag name for that. You should be able to find. It's got some other things that I also post for my other clients and stuff too. But the three, there's, I think there's three of them so far. And I'm posting each one on Monday, right about 11.45, about 15 minutes before we start the video. Uh, it's been great success so far to have that reference for people. Um, we've kind of gone towards that direction a little bit of making a new video for you guys each week and going over some of our staple exercises. Um, I do want to start right away with something as well. You know, I do not mean to be avoiding the questions that are being asked about some specifics. One that keeps coming to my, you know, my brain here is more the, the mouth and face exercises that someone asked about a couple weeks ago. There's so much information that we want to try to get out. You know, we don't want to overload all in one day, so we're going to try to get to everything as much as we can. Um, we did not do that this week. I, trust me, I promise it's on the back of my head. I, I've got it on, on, the, on the line there to go through. Um, a lot of the things that we're trying to show as well is some of the variances of the, the staple exercise that Bill and I did specifically. So, you know, Bill did not have too much of a, of a main focus around this area. A little bit more, we went a lot on the shoulders you know, body balance and stuff like that too, to kind of work on a little bit more injury prevention or lack thereof so we do not have any injuries come. Uh, balance and core work is key when it comes to that. So uh, I'm going to let Bill take over for a second. I'm going to flip it back over to the Instagram. So I need to be able to share my content. So give me one quick second. We're going to get started there. So in terms of uh, exercises, um, I have not found facial uh, musculature to be a big problem. Uh, so I don't have any direct uh, exercises to offer there. Well, we're we're going to totally try to build on that one some more. Um, you know, I, I know there's a, a bunch of areas where we can go. So we're trying to accommodate it the best we can. Um, this is a couple of the ones that we chose for this week. Uh, Bill, are you able to see the screen? Yes, like this okay. is the uh, ball tossing. It is. Why don't you start here, Bill? This was a big one for us with the sense of wrist extension and some, some of activation in those extensors up above. Why don't, why don't you give a little bit of some feedback as to why we chose this? Well, this is a, uh, an exercise that was intending to build up the wrist extensors as well as uh, musculature more proximal. Um, we needed to have uh, improved strength in the wrist extensors in order to do some of the other exercises like the uh, press from the chest, I was limited more by the, the weakness in the wrist extensor in some regards than uh, pectoral uh, weakness. Yep. So by doing this ball throwing, it was sort of a fun activity that uh, woke up the, uh, the wrist musculature. Absolutely. And Bill, I, I feel like we're pretty synced in right now because the next exercise here, you know, we're going to move into that chest press. So we'll, we'll really tie these two together when he does not, when he cannot stabilize that wrist there, when we're looking for, you know, the chest activations, we ta we've talked about a lot the last couple of weeks, there's a lot of things that come along with a full body movement. 
you know, often referred to as a compound movement where we're working different areas of di different joints, excuse me, in different areas of muscle groups. You know, as Bill's standing, obviously we need to have a really good consistent, you know, balance there as well throughout the legs delivering force into the ground. And then I will have him and remind him, sometimes he will use his opposite hand, come up and touch his chest to remind himself we're working the chest here. Is it a push? That is the primary muscle, but there is many others that are also working. So when we go from that ball toss warm up, it gets a couple of the, it gets the shoulder joint a little warmed up, the brain in the sense of having to, because I, I try to tell him to create spin. So when he creates spin with the ball, it's creating a little bit of that wrist extension reaction from the, you know, the brain to the muscle group, which is why I kind of tagged this one. The neuromuscular training has just been such a great success for him, for him and I, you know, so whether it's a feedback of us, us touching the muscle, or if it's just more so getting a quick action to feel uh, on a certain specific spot where he wasn't able to feel beforehand, it's easier to do so. Uh, we have a couple of the exercises today that kind of explain that idea. And we'll, we'll go to that next one now. Uh, Mitch this one, can, can, can I interrupt for just a second? What, what was the weight of the balls? One of the uh, uh, people attending wants to know. Yep, but both of those are two pounds. So we have two pounds, we have four pounds and six pounds in the gym. We have not gone to six pounds. For the most part, I look for this to be a coordination factor as well, not as much of a strengthening factor. Um, you know, besides forearm strength is fantastic grip strength is fantastic but i don't want that to be the main thing so if i just overloaded his his hand necessarily you know with the swinging idea I, I like him to stand tall that is our next progression to this exercise so it's also about throwing the limbs and keeping the balance so any heavier than two pounds i don't find it to be really needed if we're not able to do two pounds play with the sense of oh, i'm not sure if i can take away from sharing my screen um, you know, if someone was to put your, their hand on your hand and you just tried to push against it, whether or not you're actually lifting up or not, you should be able to create a little bit of activation in some of those extensions of the wrist. If that's not possible, have them do passive range of motion for you. Have them tap the wrist extensors. Make the brain connect to the movement as you're going through. And a lot of times that's, a, you know, really creates some success into the next positions like so. So hopefully that answered the question there. We're gonna go ahead and move, move forward here. Uh, this is a different exercise, doesn't really necessarily wrap into the previous two. Uh, this is just a great high to low pull down. So, you know, we do things like closing car doors. We do things like, well, Bill never slams his doors at home. He's, he's a very happy man. But if we ever have to close the door, you know, we need to make it to the point that the body feels balanced. Whether it's creating force or not, the body wants to remain in balance, but sometimes our body does need to create force. When does that happen? We don't always know or can predict that. So we need to be prepared for it just in case. You can do different angles here. You see Bill, he has 30 pounds on that. We have progressed to that. We did not start there. We did not even start with a twist loaded. It became more of what we did a couple of weeks ago with that dowel piece that makes us move left and right with the rotations. And we can go back to that to the Instagram, Mitch Wade PDX. You can also see this on the top of the screen here. If you're able to see, that is my tag name. So you'll be able to find my Instagram and the videos referenced there. Bill, any feedback on the twist here? What would you say was a benefit from the twist? What does this allow you to feel you know, more confident doing? Anything specific? Uh, relate to a different exercise? Does it relate to something else that we might do what would you what would you say on this Why would well i used to i used to play frisbee and i did not and i stopped playing that since you know moving became more difficult especially triceps and uh when i when i lost my triceps i lost the ability to ride a uh, two-wheel bike because i couldn't break without um risking falling over the handlebars but now uh, with my tr increased tricep strength, which in part you can see with this exercise, I think I can start playing Frisbee again. Yeah, I think that's a good point there, Bill. I should go over that a tad bit as I talked a lot about the twisting of this exercise to be a core dominant exercise. There's other things that you can add in. It's actually handy right now that the screen is paused. As you see Bill right there, he's starting with a bent elbow position. And then as he finishes out, 
we are at an extended straight elbow position, which is going to be working a lot of the tricep muscles back there. You know, we can have focuses there too. I can say, Bill, I really want you to focus on this. Maybe go a little lighter if we need to and say extend really well all the way across. Maybe don't rotate your body as much so you have to put more into the arms. There's a lot of processes that you can do with exercises and working out, but it's a bit like we talked about last week. You have to need, or you need to have a plan. You need to understand the plan. You know, what is the plan for? What's kind of that what, why, and how, and how does that work? And how does it all connect to make us be successful? We're gonna go to our next exercise here. This one was kind of fun. Oh, it's a little bit outside the line. I apologize about that. Well, <laughs> you can kind of see what we're, what we're doing here with Bill. This is a little bit more of where we have fun. He has the same amount of uh, the weight in the balls there. They're two pounds a piece. And I have him going for overhead slams. You missed the one on the right side. I must have, it must have trimmed down a little bit on the Instagram. You missed the one on the right side, but that left one, you can see a little bit more. We're creating power. We're getting the body to reach overhead and go into an extended mid spine position, teaching the arm to get long, have support, and then create power down. Uh, as you guys probably remember on the first couple of, of weeks here, we talked a lot about the success of being able to get Bill's you know, arm raise, the forward arm raise to go much higher. He started around probably mid chest level and now he's able to throw it up. That TRX golf swing that we showed, I do believe in week two, huge, huge progression exercise right there, really got us to where we're at now. And now we're creating power. We're teaching the body and the brain a whole different idea. You know, we want control most of the time, all the time, really. But we also need to be able to d d deliver power, deliver force, you know, and then obviously having control along with that is key but it's not always instant. We gotta teach the body and teach the brain to be comfortable with that if the demand is there. Bill, any feedback there? Sometimes I go to the zoo and intimidate the, uh, the monkeys, it's uh, real. even without throwing my poop. We are all primal, Bill. Every one yeah. of us is primal. <laughs> we'll go to the next exercise. I apologize about that one being a little bit out of the screen there. This one was fun. This is a big staple exercise for Bill and I because this is something that he was very happy to have go up in weight and up in strength. First of all, the flexion of just the elbow where we're not working to as much brachioradialis, supination and pronation, which means you're moving the forearm more so. You know, we can isolate the biceps more so. And what you see me doing there is tapping on his bicep. So when I tap there on the opposite side, he gets kind of a contralateral connection you know, meaning both of his limbs on both sides, he's really able to dial his brain into the bicep feel when he's holding the weight on top and I'm tapping that bicep, he's trying to contract that bicep, getting the, the belly of the body to really feel that strength. And then when he goes back into the extended position and working the movement patterns of the bicep, then it's a little bit more connected. And we, have, we had some great fatigue on these reps here. We actually went up to 10 pounds on this too. And I am so pleased with that because I could not even lift my own arms with the biceps, the weight of my own arms, much less uh, additional weight. So this translates into feeding myself or uh, drinking from a cup without looking as uh, awkward as I did before regaining the strength. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's, you know, individual muscles there's a time and a place to work them and then getting them back to the point where i talked about compound movements you know we want to involve a, 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 or include a very good you know variety of exercises challenge the brain you know we talked about uncomfortable zones a couple of weeks ago when you get into that uncomfortable zone our, our bodies do really well at adapting and we usually get better at it if we're going too fast too soon that's when we're you know putting up the point of injury or, or you know risk of but Bill and I, you know, we take our time. We think about what we're going to do. We talk about the feedback. Communication is so key. And that's whether or not it's about, you know, somebody just your significant other helping you, maybe a, a child, you know, anything is fine. It doesn't have to be necessarily a physical therapist or a trainer, but have some communication because just, when we talk to somebody else about it, our brain stores more of that information anyway. And then you're getting to know yourself even better, which I find to be very key when it comes to neuromuscular training. And that can involve anybody and everybody, whether it's, you know, we're talking about FSH specifically or not.
I want to go back through these videos real quick, give some people maybe that didn't see the, the beginning ones. Here's the slams, creating power. Always fun there. Making our twist, a little high to low twist, a lot of different focuses. Right now, I don't have them rotating the feet, mostly just coming from a power pull from the right side. A little bit of like a wood chop is what you'll hear people call this as well. And we go into our press. Remember the press though was also done from the wrist extension of the ball throw from beforehand to just activate certain muscle groups. And this is us having a plan. We have a little order of operations, you know, we, we, we know what kind of activates the muscle groups for us to then bring together and try to make them all work together. And when I put the bicep curls in the very end, this was not our specific order today or the, the day that we did this video. I, I just threw these ones a little bit more together. The ball toss and the press are actually, you know, simultaneous there. They go from one from the next. Bill and I will do different ranges here too. I'll make him scoop back or I'll scoop back. I'll have him go across body sometimes. We'll talk about whether or not we can swing with the arm. That was the first thing Bill asked me when we talked about this exercise for the video. He said, well, should I allow a swing? If we don't allow a swing, he really needs to create a lot more wrist extension for that ball to spin or just power up in the upper delt for the forward raise. But he's still thinking, like I wanted to remind that part, to get that ball to spin so it's not just the shoulder making that. He's trying to flick the wrist, trying to flick the wrist, point the fingers and lift them up. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Very nice, Bill. I wonder if we can either uh, open it up to questions or I have a question for you, Mitch. Yep. What's the next step? Where, where, where do you think we should uh, go next in terms of improving my uh, condition? Well, I think I want to I touch base there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this off so people can actually see me. So give me one quick second. back and active there we go you know I, I think one thing that we want to talk about as well that bill and i have not put out there yet is you know we have increased to doing 35 pound kettlebell squats you know he's doing a high high hold of an 18 pound kettlebell squat he's doing a 35 pound from the floor we work up to a 44 that's a big challenge for us but there are a lot of things that you know we're not just there we've progressed a long ways bill has done so much you know, from being consistent, having the plan, you know, there'll be times where maybe I, you know, I kind of joke with him and say I'm being annoying, but yeah, I'll send him a message and just ask him how it's going, you know, try to keep ourselves tuned into the plan that we have. You know, we deliver really, really good results when we keep things consistent. Uh, as to where to go with Bill now, you know, we, we, we create new goals. You know, people talk about short-term goals and long-term goals, great to have for both of us. You know, and that's from his side and my side. Um, you know, when it comes to me being an assistant there, I have to have some success in it too. You know, I need to see things that are going to keep me motivated to wanting to go and learn more, teach more, have some energy every time I show up for Bill too. It's great. Two of us really do that for each other. You know, something that Bill mentioned just a little bit ago was riding the tricycle. So the tricycle with that extended uh, elbow position, you know, was really from a, a tricep kind of, you know, lack of muscular muscular activation and support so we would do all sorts of things like push-ups you know getting into a push-up position having to hold that uh, we just actually had a really good kind of progression last week uh, he was able to hold in a position for much longer and really feel secure it was actually a full push-up position on the ground uh, and that is just amazing that is not where we were were at whatsoever you know and that's on a comfortable uh, a couple things comfortability or necessarily the ability to do so you know, and what we have achieved so far in, in just within a few years has just been amazing. Um, where to go now? Well, Bill just said he wants to ride his bike to the beach. So that's a pretty good goal of mine. What do I got to do with him? I got to get some endurance going for him. The endurance is probably the next biggest part for Bill. Uh, when he mentioned that part of disuse, you know, I've had a couple of people reach out to me and talk about disuse. They say, you know, I, 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 can, I can do some of these things, but it's really mentally hard because it's just not as good or I find it declining. 
So the disuse is also a factor as to why this goes away. Uh, Bill was definitely in that circle there of, you know, he, he would get fatigued doing certain things that he did, didn't used to get fatigued, you know, of doing wise. And so when he tells me about wanting to go to the beach, that's a long ways. So I need to get him onto a couple of cardio pieces of equipment, you know, get him into a couple of different, uh, you know, I'll do anything from like banded shuffles and make him really have to address. I want the cardiovascular system to now work with his body that works really efficiently. He can do most things. We need to be careful. We need to activate. We need to stay consistent. You know, we can't forget about what made us feel better at the beginning. That is a big line that I will say to people all the time, whether I have them for a hip replacement, you know, or they just have pain in one of their joints. Don't forget about what made you feel better. We still need to do it. Our cars always have to have oil changes, unless eventually we go to electric and that's a whole different deal. But for the most part, we need to maintain everything. Don't overindulge in anything, keep it consistent. We like our water, we like our sleep, we like our exercise, we like our sunshine. No, there's a lot of easy things that can really go together to make a good system for us to have some good success there too. Hey Mitch, we have, we have a couple of questions regarding recovery time after exercise. Uh, people asked me, what's the recovery time after exercising like this? How do I feel the next day? How many times a week do I do these exercises? I initially was very fearful uh, because after intense exercise, I would be very tired the next day and uh, I didn't want to de decline. But over the course of the years that we've been training together, I have not had uh, uh, as, as much fatigue the following day. And I do training sessions with Mitch twice a week and I do lesser exercise, not as intensively on my own most days, as well as some aerobic exercise, either walking the treadmill or riding my recumbent uh, tricycle. Um, Bill, Bill, where would you say you, you think you would need to work on when, you, when I bring up that goal of wanting to ride to the beach? What would you say something you would need to work on there? I think in addition to endurance, which you're right, I, I, uh, I need to get faster. Um, I, I, uh, a couple of years ago, I had uh, a, a, an infection unrelated to FSH, but when I was uh, incapacitated and uh, hospitalized for several days, it, it's taken me many months to get back to where I was before. So um, I'm slower on my bike than I was before and I need to build that up. And one of the exercises that we've done, which is the uh, sprinting on the resistance bicycle, I think has been very helpful in that regard. You able to see this on here, Bill? If yes. I, does it yes. pop up? So that's a... Uh, bike where air on the fan, it, it provides the resistance. And Mitch would have me go as fast as I could go in a minute and then uh, rest, repeat that for a couple of times. And I noticed even without doing any further training, a week later, my uh, speeds were better and my endurance was faster. So sprinting is really a, a useful technique. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's pretty awesome that we're sitting at this point, you know, now talking about what our goals want to be and our goals ended up becoming doing faster sprinting and endurance. Those are not goals that we had at the beginning. And we want to make sure that we're painting that picture, you know, very clearly as Bill has worked very hard to get where he's at today. You know, it, it's, it, I'm going to go back to what I just keep saying of consistency has been huge for him, but then being smart, and having a good program and plan is key as well. You know, so I want to go back to some of those, you know, previous videos of some easy slides, get the activation muscles going and then get to a support system of your body that feels comfortable to get onto some of these newer areas that can bring you back to those uncomfortable zones. Going too soon can be risky. We need to be smart. Uh, I'm going to address. Thank you, Mitch. I want to address another question from a panelist. I mean, a, uh, 
a viewer. Does Bill have much back pain? I did have back pain. Um, and I think that strengthening my lower abdominal muscles, which I didn't think was good, was possible and improving core strength elsewhere. Um, and also walking on the treadmill has helped me with back pain. Plus, uh, Mitch, some of the exercises and stretching exercises that you've shown me uh, have been useful in that regard. Uh, stretching across the uh, the ball and um, uh, even even laying on the flat bench there on the using, flat bench right letting the arms like, hang over the bench do some different exercises there you know laying down flat on like the some kind of an exercise bench if you have it or even a piano bench is what I've recommended to a couple people before you know it, it, it works really well to kind of separate and mold the chest or open the chest and then allow our back erectors or our muscles kind of rather like a back abs is what I'll kind of explain to people. They go up and down our spine all the way and they just help support the system of moving up and down. So when he lays back, it's a position where he doesn't really have to keep himself upwards, the piano bench or the flat bench is doing it and the muscles up here lengthen a tad bit. Then that's where we kind of got into some, you know, chest flies and that was with zero weight, just his own body weight, but it was more of that connection. If he can't make the chest fly, which he could not at first, I would just put my hand on, a, on his hand and I would tell him to try. That is contracting. Anytime you make a muscle or a, a joint try to move, there's a muscle that's gonna control it. If you can't do it, that muscle's probably not working. So we need to try to find some way to get it to go. We had very, very, you know, we had many, many days where we just broke it down. There was many frustrating days. There was a couple of days that I think Bill almost walked away from me, but it's okay. You know, that's all right. It's all right to have frustrations. You just got to kind of find a little bit of a direction to go with it. You know, where can we, where can we find, do we find a wall to assist and hold on to? Do we go to just my hand? Yes, during this pandemic, be careful. Don't hold hands with people you don't know. But for the most part, yes. You know, if he just holds on here, we can do a whole nother range because he's confident. He knows he's not going to go. If I start tapping a muscle, he knows it's there then all of a sudden it works and then it's there. And then he's like, I feel it. And that's us making success right there. A little bit of success goes a long ways. You know, know what it's supposed to work, know what you're doing. If you're doing a bicep curl, it's gonna work your bicep. If you're doing a leg kick out, it's gonna work a muscle out here. Don't worry about what I just said, just in general. Simple movements have a muscle that controls it. Learn, learn about your body. Learn hey Mitch, we have another, uh... Another question from the audience, uh, and I don't know what this means. Is that like an HIT routine on a spinning bike? HIT routine. Can you so explain what hit, that is? Mm -hmm. A HIT routine is a high intensity like interval training. So a HIT, H-I-I-T, high intensity interval training is what that means. Uh, this bike absolutely could be involved in a HIT training. HIT training in general, though, is when you're really just kind of keeping your heart rate up at a certain point. If anybody's familiar with Orange Theory Fitness, that's kind of the idea there, is they're in the Orange Theory of expanding en energy. So the longer you're in that Orange Theory, the better you're doing for points that you deserve in that class. So really anything that's gonna bring your heart rate or bring your cardiovascular system to have to kind of breathe a little more, get a little more intense, is gonna be pretty good for you. That bike is intense. It takes about probably 15 to 20 seconds for it to make it to the point where it gets very difficult. Yeah. I, I wanna just jump in, this is June, to say that there is now published uh, evidence that high intensity training um, is uh, certainly not harmful and can be beneficial for people with FSHD. There's been a clinical study of that. And uh, I personally like the idea because I always think cardiovascular training requires, you know, like going out and running miles, which I hate to do, but the idea that you could get it done in these short bursts, intense bursts is very attractive. <laughs> I would agree with that. Um, <laughs> so, so there's some questions in the Q&A section. Um, let's see, uh, one, uh, Karen wants to know, can we actually increase the strength by exercising with weights? And you know, Bill, what did you experience when you started working with weights? Well, certainly, I mean, I, I didn't think, my, my initial uh, presumption, was that I was only going to be able to improve range of motion and regain strength 
in muscles that had gotten weak because of disuse. But I happily uh, discovered with Mitch that I'm able to regain strength in muscles that are weak from dystrophy. And that includes my lower abdominal muscles below the belly button, which I call, uh, I contribute to the lumbar lordosis. Those have gotten stronger. Some of the uh, shoulder girdle muscles, the biceps, the triceps, and a little bit of plantar flexion has, has gotten stronger as well. Absolutely. That's a good segue into another question, which is how did you strengthen those lower abdominal muscles? Mitch, can you yep. explain these exercises and maybe demonstrate them? Yep, absolutely. How do you isolate the lower I, uh, abdominal? We've had a lot of questions on the lower abdominals. Maybe that lower abdominal is one that we focus specifically on next time and just do all kind of core, core work that we've done, whether it's a little bit of hip flexion, uh, or we're working the rectus abdominis and transverse abdominis. Those are two different areas, more around that six pack area, yeah. you know, that we're, all, that we're all trying to shoot for. Um, the hip flexors are deep muscles inside of the pelvic girdle and closer to the spine, but all of them do consist of our core. Um, a, a quick, a quick kind of answer though, I don't want to leave you guys completely yeah. hanging, okay. is, a, is, a, is a dead bug again. You know, a dead bug is if you're laying on your back and that is an easy one for Bill and I to do, you know, and you lift the legs off, you can hold on to something like so and extend the leg out. And if the leg or the, any of the limbs move, the core needs to remain the same. So that is one of the biggest challenges to keep into the point when the, if the spine gravitates up towards the ceiling, you know, that's the issue of hyperlordosis. We need to keep that a little bit more snug. So Bill, I want you to take over for a second. I'm gonna actually set up and I'll just demonstrate out on the ground here. All right. While Mitch is setting up, um, Another question was pertaining to uh, help with re proteins and amino acids. I know that there's been some uh, work on creatine monohydrate, which was thought to be somewhat helpful. I just can't stand uh, the chalky powder. And I don't know uh, how much I can take safely, but maybe other people will know more about uh, creatine monohydrate. Uh, I think most of our diets are more than adequate in terms of protein content. I would second that. There's a question here also about the type of stretching that you do pre and post workouts. Bill, do you want to um, address that? I think uh, the, the stretching, uh, in, in addition to stretching muscles, we're sort of trying to slowly wake them up uh, so that all the muscle groups can engage in a particular exercise. So uh, Mitch and I spend yeah. a lot of time doing uh, gentle range of motion exercises in the neck, shoulder girdle, hip girdle, and distal musculature before uh, doing uh, weight against resistance. Yeah. I want to touch base on that real quickly, and then I'll go into the dead bug as well. Um, active stretching. So there is a big difference between passive stretching and active stretching, you know, or static stretching rather. So, you know, if we're just sitting and holding, that is a version of stretching that Bill and I have not really done. Uh, there might be a couple of positions at the beginning that we did with our chest, if we were laying on the ground or on the bench press, like we just mentioned or if we use the TRX to, to stretch open the chest out to their sides. Um, but we don't really sit and hold very much. I want, them, I want them to feel the lengthening of the muscles, but I want them to feel in a little bit more of an active form. Um, you know, if, if I met Bill and all he ever did was active stretching, maybe I would change it up a little bit, but it was a little bit more to the other side of things, which I think more of my clients and more of like, you know, the FSH community is probably gonna say, I need to probably move more rather than try to move less. So I think the active stretching approach would probably be a really good way to go. Great. All right, okay. let's see that dead bug. Awesome. <laughs> so can everybody, can you see me okay right here? Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm right here, even just right here would be an easy start. And what that is, is when we're laying on our back, our spine is neutral, which means it's a little bit of a curve. Now, when I try to flatten my low back, try to make your low spine touch the ground, your core activates. 
your pelvis, it rotates backwards and your low spine goes flat to the ground. You can't put your hands underneath anymore. That will activate the lower abdominals there. The progression to this, lift up your legs and lift up your arms. And this is why it's called the dead bug. And if you move one of the limbs, it's harder to control that neutral position. When I go out with my limb, I don't want my spine to gravitate towards the ceiling. That's me taking activation out of my core. Okay, if we can't do that, hold on to something up above. Grab a weight, grab someone's hands, grab someone's ankles, and you can do that. And that will help you maintain that lower spine position, which will also in tune turn on the lower core. Another um, exercise that you helped me with that strengthened the low, uh, the um, lower abdominal muscles was doing partial sit-ups on the uh, ball. Yep. Absolutely. So yeah. we'll include a couple more of our staples when it goes to uh, the, the video next because that'd be a great idea. Yeah, I think a session focused on abdominals would be Totally. Tremendous. And even yeah. kind of the back pain. Back pain yeah. has been a couple of questions there right. too. So we can address a couple of different ideas next right. week with really kind of more to core activation and some back pain or stiffness. Uh -huh. So there's a couple questions and maybe we should wrap after that because we've already gone over our usual time and we don't want to keep you guys from doing your workout. So you're, yes, uh, I, I will so, actually have even just a few minutes. I have a, a next client coming up in just a moment. Oh, so. okay. So, um, so we're good. There's a question. Um, what do you do if you can't lift your legs from the ground in the dead bug exercise? Is there like a modified <laughs> version? Yep, so that's that beginning exercise. The feet stay on the ground, the knees stay bent, and if you can't bend the knees, that's okay. Put it up on either a couch. A couch would work too, because then the knees would be bent. So if you put them, if you like put your, the back of your uh, shins or your calves on the couch, and then you bump your butt cheeks to the end of the couch, that would support that position. Or just keep them on the ground like so. So like my beginning position was just right here. So you can go hands out to your sides and then try to flatten the low spine and your core will activate also with your, your lower core as well as it will posteriorly tilt your pelvis. It'll right. tilt it backwards. One of the advantages of working with a smart trainer like Mitch is that he can take someone with any range of disabilities and modify the exercise to uh, accommodate it to where you are. Yes. And then build up from that. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Bill. That is very nice. But yes, I mean, I'm usually not so nice. Don't get accustomed. <laughs> it's true. It's, um, you know, it, it's really just about being creative as well. Know what you're trying to attack and be creative there. You know, jumping, jumping the gun too soon can just bring us into a, a risk injury spot, you know, so it's really just be creative, figure out, make adjustments. If it doesn't work, search for professional, look on YouTube, look on Google, but know what you're looking for. There's a lot of information out there. So you need to do your own filtering through that process. Use this information, ask me, it's okay. I've got an email, I have contact information, okay. that's okay. You know, if you have a, a simple question, I've usually got a probably maybe, maybe a little more than a simple answer, yeah. but you know, there's a, there's a lot of ways to be able to attack that direction. Yeah, yeah. Well, my personal experience is it's really worth, worth finding a professional trainer to work with because they, I mean, they understand the muscle, you know, the neuromuscular system and they can observe and, you know, yep. even if it's a few sessions, just so you understand what's going yep. on with your body, it's really worthwhile. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, very, I don't know if there's a short answer to this. Someone says they've focused on swimming and a lot of people in the FSH community do like, love um, swimming and water exercise, especially because it provides so much uh, support against gravity. Yep. She's wondering if that's a good thing or bad thing or limited and what it can do for her. Wonderful. It's complete resistance in all directions. And there's not a extremely heavy resistance. You can make it harder. I, you know, I've talked to Bill about this a little bit when we, we, we used to work at a bigger corporation gym um, and there was a pool that was available. And so, you know, going into the pool and making directions or even just forward and backward pushes as you, you can you're more buoyant so you don't have to fight against gravity there you know you are still pushing and pulling against resistance though it's not just it's not it's not gravity you know so you have to play against that water resistance 
which is fantastic. Yeah. You know, holding on to the side rails, making lateral walks, making high knees, you know, yeah. doing a little flutter kicks, running in there, pushing to the right, pushing to the there's so many options in the water. It is fantastic. Yeah. But once again, be careful and know where you I guess it go. really, really comes down to like, what exactly are you working on when you're in the water? That's probably more important than whether you're in the water or, or on land. Yeah. Um, one last question is about the exercise bike. Is there, um, uh, what, I guess, what is the type of bike that you just showed? And also are fan bikes the best? And is there a recumbent version of a fan bike? Um, I'm not sure if there's a recumbent version of a fan bike specifically. Re fan bikes are just very tough because you're playing against the resistance of the air. So you're going against, you know, your own kind of push and pull there. Um, and a cable pulley system is going to be a little bit more, less resistance, technically. Um, as you can usually adjust the resistance, you can't really adjust the resistance on this. Um, some of them you can, as you can push a tension rod that goes into the actual spinning uh, pulley system. But I don't want to get into that. It's a little bit more technical. Um, the, fan, the fan bike is, is it's hard. It's very, I call it the, the capacity trainer. So I would not necessarily recommend the fan bike to somebody that's more so just beginning. Um, um, when somebody asks the high intensity interval training type style, I mean, you, you, you need to be a little bit more experienced to jump into there. Your heart needs to be ready for it. Your body needs to be ready for it. So I would not necessarily say the fan bike is the best direction to go at the beginning okay. or right away. Um, right. But a sit down recumbent bike or any kind of just resistance bike or anything that's gonna make your, your heart rate increase if it's just getting up and walking, you know, down and backwards in the hallway, challenge yourself to go left and right, challenge yourself to go forward and backwards, you know, that could be enough. We, we don't have to have equipment. We don't have to have, you know, an exercise bike or an exercise, you know, apparatus at home to do the things that we did. Bill and I have never been up to the cardio room. We did do it here because I had a more accessible. But my point is, we don't need it to make, you know, really good progressions. He has a treadmill at home and he has a park right next to his house. Great. So, um, well, I think we should probably wrap for today. And Beth, if you'd like to come back and give a quick um, you know, update on what's coming. But uh, meanwhile, thank you, thank you, thank you, Bill and Mitch. Another wonderful thank you, Mitch. session. Thank you, June. Thank these you are Beth. just, I can't tell you how, what a great response we're getting from these. So thanks so much. Um, just a reminder though, next Monday is Memorial Day. So we will be skipping next Monday. Uh, but we have one more scheduled on June the 1st, the Monday after. And um, okay. then maybe we can reconvene and see what, what it makes sense if we want to keep doing these on Mondays on a regular basis, or if maybe we want to spread them out a little bit, or, or if you're just sick of us, or, you know. Whatever. <laughs> but uh, again, well, thanks. Thank you guys. It's fun. Okay, great. Um, on this coming Wednesday on Facebook Live, we've got two events. Uh, Belinda Miller's reading her children's book. And then um, in the evening, uh, our our famous Tim Hollenbeck is doing his radio show, so please call in and listen to him. Um, he's, a, he's a hoot. And then um, also this coming Thursday on our regular Sequester Camp webinar, we've got Michelle Melian from Fulcrum, who's gonna be giving um, some updates on um, one of the, the trials um, that they, they completed um, late last year. So um, that's it for today. Again, Bill, Mitch, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, watch for these videos on our website, on our Facebook page, and on our YouTube channel. And um, everyone stay healthy and take care of yourselves. All right. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you.